of you. Uh, my name is Fundi Legate. We have taken a decision as a collective uh, leadership and management of the sector after I have developed a, a response um, on how to maintain uh, the stability, the momentum uh, in terms of the performance system of the education in the province. We have developed an analysis uh, from grade R to grade 12 and uh, also learned from the previous two academic years which in our view have given a rise um, in terms of the performance. But one issue that we would want to lift uh, quite very seriously inside uh, is that we observed that um, there are two provinces in the country that are consistent uh, in terms of the improvement uh, within a particular barometer of the percentages that are required. For example, you would see that KZN is consistently at 7% improvement every academic year. And Eastern Cape is consistently at 5% uh, improvement every academic year. And then we took a decision to say, let's have a bilateral with KZN. What made KZN to be positioned two last year uh, from uh, where it was coming from? And we observed that part of the success story of the KZN in terms of the research we have made is that it has taken more time to invest on the subject advisory component in education and also on the circuit management um, so that you can be able to see why a number of schools just perform uh, miraculously uh, within a particular circuit uh, in KZN and how it has sustained uh, the improvement of the mathematics and science, uh, which in our view was a bit closer to the methodology that we're using as an Eastern Cape. Now, we then took a decision to say, after we have engaged the principals of schools across the province, we need to focus before the trial examinations on this, com on this component of subject advisory section just to get a sense on whether systemically do we all understand the implications um, of an upward trajectory as a system now. It must not be an issue of schools. It must be a systemic and organic uh, process that is sustainable and that is uh, cultured. And uh, wh whether I am there or not tomorrow, the results of the Eastern Cape must improve. Whether the HOD is there tomorrow or that day or somebody else, the province must be able to be repositioned, to be where it's supposed to be. So basically, we had that discussion and uh, also looking into the current performance of 85% that, by the way, we achieved it in March in the first quarter, uh, which then forces me to take a decision to say, if by March you were at 87% pass rate and you were given a mandate of 85, how do you make sure that you don't drop the ball? And how do you make sure that you encourage uh, those that are on the front line and how do you make sure that the system is helpful? Uh, tools of trades are given to circuit managers and subject advisors. And uh, also, how do you make sure that study guides and examinations, preparation for trial examination in the province is more than the word to be ready? Because if anything happens differently from what we have just observed now, it can be a crisis. So you need to take the people of the province into confidence um, so that you can have an organic um, throughput of results that are well planned, well executed with precision. So it can be accidental that you have results that are happening uh, in the space. Today we are here in Amtata uh, just to deal with cluster A. Um, all the circuit managers and ETOs of this area, Cluster A, 
then tomorrow will be in Grahamstown, which is cluster B, on the same content. But I can safely say to you, we are on the right track. Um, we have got a serious discussion with the, uh, the research unit of the department. And uh, yesterday I was presenting a discussion in the National Assembly uh, on what should be the approach of the servant administration in basic education. Because my, 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 my observation is that, colleagues, beyond the numerical strength of the results, are we in content correct in terms of the NDP? Are we able to produce a skillful citizenship that does not rely on CVs for employment? Are we able to create opportunities um, that can match uh, the international standards that are required by the global village in terms of the economy? Because if education, both basic and higher education in the country, is unable to answer that question, you will forever have qualified graduates being unemployed. So you need an aggressive uh, realignment uh, of strategy and policy and an aggressive execution uh, from a vocational skills uh, education component and upgrade um, the resourcing and uh, provisioning of the Tibet colleges in the country and, and resolve the issue of NASFAS as well.